So you can see it in him and you can hear the frustration in his voice. And we're talking about Keith one time Thurman, 23 and 0 with 21 KOs. He's going to be taking on a fighter by the name of Leonard Bundu, 31 and 0, 31 0 and 1 with 11 KOs. Leonard Bundu is not a global unknown. He's unknown in the United States, but as far as his last two fights are concerned, the toughest fights of his career, um, he didn't look too good. Now, let's put things into perspective. He's 31-0-2 with 11 KOs. He's 40 years old. He's ranked, if I'm correct, number four or five by the WBA. Remember, Keith Thurman is the WBA interim champion. You got Amir Khan after that, number two. And then guess who's number three? Marcos El Chino Maidana. So you have to say, well, Maidana didn't want to fight him because they tried to make Maidana versus Keith Thurman on the undercard of Floyd Mayweather versus Amir Khan. That was supposed to be a plan. That didn't go through, obviously. So then you got Marcos Maidana not wanting any parts of Keith Thurman basically looking like, yo, how do I go to Keith Thurman? Um, I mean, how do I go from Mayweather down to Keith Thurman? That's somewhat the way that um, Robert Guerrero was feeling. So you got Keith Thurman and now Amir Khan. Amir Khan is fighting guys like Julio Diaz, Luis Collazo, but fans would love to see him fight um, Keith Thurman. But who's Amir Khan fighting, even though it's a good fight? He's fighting Devin Alexander. But the stakes would be very high for an Amir Khan versus a Keith Thurman fight. So I can understand why Amir Khan wouldn't want to take that fight, not in this point in his career, because if Keith Thurman was to win, well, actually, let's just talk about what will be on the line. The WBA number one contender spot, the interim championship, will be on the line. And the number one contender spot mandatory for Floyd Mayweather's WBC. So right now, if you look at it, when it comes to 147 pound, um, the, the 147 pound division, Keith Thurman, Amir Khan and Keith Thurman are the only two fighters that are close or basically who deserve, you know, um, title shots realistically. So and I'm talking about, you know, as far as the organizations are concerned and all that. But she factor in Leonard Bundu, who, if I'm correct, is like number, f I think he's number four, four. One, he's number four or five. Also, in the, no, I think he's number three. Leonard Bundu is number three in the WBA, number three or four. I'm not going to confuse myself. Go down there and look it up. And if you look at that, so you got Keith Thurman, Amir Khan, Marcos Madonna, Leonard Bundu. So as far as, you know, why pick Leonard Bundu? Why fighting him? As far as WBA rankings is concerned and eliminating a potential guy that can um, be fighting you in the future, you know, for that spot, you know, or maybe the belt, you know, if you do get it when Floyd Mayweather decides to vacate it because he's not going to fight you for it. Then you got Leonard Bundu out of the way. That'll leave Amir Khan if Amir Khan doesn't, I mean, if Amir Khan doesn't pursue Mayweather and Marcos McDonald. So, Let's talk about Leonard Bundu. For, for some reason, I feel he's going to get knocked out. And that's because... Hold on, let me get my breath. So you do live videos, you want to continuously keep talking, just talking and talking. But you got um Leonard Bundu, who was fighting a fighter by the name of uh, Lee Purdy. Lee Purdy fought Devin Alexander, I believe that was in 2012. Devin Alexander's fighting Amir Khan on the main event of, um, you know, Keith Thurman and Leonard Bundu who's going to be the co-feature. So, you got Leonard Bundu taking body work from Lee Purdy, who is not a significant body puncher. Now, we know Keith Thurman has a very good attack to the body. So, it's hard for me to see... I can understand, okay, Leonard Bundu, he's one of those type of fighters that outworks you, but he doesn't have too much head movement, and he doesn't move around the ring, so he's right there for Keith Thurman to hit is what I'm telling you. And then he's only got 11 KOs, so you have to ask yourself, well, with those 11 KOs, how is he going to hurt him? You know, and it doesn't really help his chances that he's 40 years old, too. So my job somewhat is to try to make people, you know, see some type of way that maybe this guy can win and, and, um, and uh, educate you on why this guy's here at this point and why he's getting this shot. But as far as this fight right here, it depends because, you know, I've watched about four Leonard Bundu fights. I watched I watched the um, last fight he had. Uh, he defeated an undefeated fighter by Frankie Gavin. Frankie Gavin fought a by a fighter by the name of uh, Bradley Skeeter on the card of Tony Bellew versus Nathan Cleverly too, yada, yada, yada. But when it comes to over there in the U.K., 
and overseas in general, he's been fighting credible competition, but he just hasn't been fighting American fighters. People have to realize, or Americans have to realize that boxing is a global sport. You know, and I understand that, you know, there's a frustration, especially with me, that uh, us over here, we don't have the chance to watch or the resources to be able to watch those fights. Anyway, I'm going to be covering this fight live as I do. I cover every single major fight live. T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy live with Real Combat Media, and I cover boxing. Please subscribe.